Let me start Thank by you. asking the impossible question about where gold prices go, shall I? Because that seems to be uh, what most many people want to get a sense of from you, and you can you can sort of caveat it with uncertainties. But on the one hand, you can see reasons why people are buying gold. People talk about it as an inflation hedge. On the other hand, yields rising uh, suggests maybe not. And you can tell me what's happening at literally the, uh, uh, the, 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 the face of the market right now. Well, gold traditionally has always played a role as an inflation hedge, and I, I don't believe that's changed. I believe that um, gold prices where they stand now are reflective of the world in which we live. And, and this is a world where, you know, the U.S. dollar is facing um, pressures from a variety of fronts. Uh, and no, probably the most significant factors uh, weighing against it are, you know, heavy U.S. debt, um, huge money printing uh, mm. issues. Uh, these are the kind of things that I think are going to keep people interested in gold, but no one knows what that catalyst is that finally moves it in a, in a significant way. Right, and any sense of how high it goes then? Exactly. And I think the things are lined up for gold to make a, a fairly significant move over the next uh, couple of years. But uh, it, it's a bit like looking outside and seeing the weather. It, okay. it may be a heavy, cloudy day, but nobody knows when it's exactly yeah. it's going to start raining. Okay, Mark, jump in. John. John, you say a significant move, but we'd love some kind of context about what you mean. Do you mean 10% higher? I mean, 20% higher? What are we expecting? We're this big, big inflation regime, and gold reaction has been pretty, pretty damp so far. And I, I kind of in that context of what kind of significant move you're expecting, what do you say to investors who say, why buy gold? I've got Bitcoin. <laughs> Well, that's a good point, and I, I would say that uh, a lot of speculative money has gone into Bitcoin, and, and in fact, uh, so much of what we see at the margins are speculative trades. So, for example, a $40 drop in the gold price because Paul's renamed as, uh, as chairman of the Fed. None of the problems that are facing the, the Fed have gone away. It's the same set of problems. He's the same gentleman trying to deal with them. Uh, does that really, in and of itself, um, give so much market confidence that uh, gold is uh, is going to go into a big downward swing. And to my way of thinking, no, but it is a, a piece of news that the market will trade on. So these things are very, very short term. I think that what I'm referring to is something more, more long term fundamentally driven. And the, um, the, the extent of the, uh, the rise in the U.S. debt and the, the way we're seeing inflation catch on, these are okay. not things that are going away. Okay, so they're not going away. So you still see those, those reasons to, 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 to see a higher gold price. Um, let me ask you about consolidation within the mining sector. There has been some mid-tier Canadian gold miners that have been consolidating of late. Is that something that for your business is, is a priority? Are you, are you exploring any options like that? Well, we've been involved in M&A quite extensively over the last five years, um, and, and we've built our company through a combination of, of M&A and orga organic growth, and uh, with, with a big focus on Canada, which I think, uh, you know, given the ever-increasing ge geopolitical risks, I think Canada's emerging as one of the key jurisdictions for, for especially for gold mining in the world. Um, but I, I do believe that. Um, that what we're going to see is um, more of a focus on M&A in order for, you know, consolidation is going to lead uh, to um, the bigger companies handling the issue of uh, what to do about, hmm. about reserves and, and depleting reserves. And, and that's one of the key issues f facing our industry right now. Okay. Anna, you say this wave of uh, this. Uh, sorry, Anna said this wave of consolidation pointed out there, John, and you say it will continue. Are you looking for deals, or have you been approached for any deals? We're not. I mean, we, we were active when the gold price was substantially lower, so we built a really good pipeline uh, for us to go forward and build, and that's in fact what we're doing right now. We've we've seen our production grow threefold, and we've seen our resources grow about fivefold over the last few years, and that was largely driven through M&A and, and developing the assets that we acquired. And that's effectively what companies have to do. Um, you have to acquire when, when the prices are low. That's the, that's the one thing you can control in our business. But what we're seeing now is a, 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 a more of a mid-stage market, mid-stage, where the, the majors themselves start to get more heavily involved in M&A, and that's when the, 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 the wider investment market starts to pay attention. The deals that are being done now, I think, are really good deals and, and, and bode well for the long-term okay. growth uh, for the industry. Let me think about your 
global footprint at, at uh, Alamos Gold. And, and one place that you have been operating and, and, and trying to operate is Turkey. Uh, I understand that you have some legal proceedings in place uh, over in Turkey. What stage are those legal proceedings at? Can you tell us anything about how close to a resolution you are? Well, you never know. I mean, the, we launched a bit claim against Turkey after a, you know, a fairly lengthy uh, attempt for us to uh, get our licenses renewed there, which, uh, for reasons they never explained, uh, Turkey didn't do. Um, we invested $250 million in that country, and uh, that's an important investment for our country, uh, for our company. And uh, we're in that phase of a bit claim where the parties are supposed to, you know, work together towards a solution, and we're we're obviously trying to do that. Uh, is the government engaging? Yes, yes, they are. Yeah, they they're um, they've got to take these things seriously. I mean, these are these are big investments. These are long-term investments. Uh, Turkey was one of the first places that uh, we attempted to do business after we, we had established ourselves as a producer in Mexico. Uh, so we got in there, you know, relatively early back in 2010. It was a, it was a lot of time and investment to bring those projects forward. And while we were in construction, we were effectively uh, shut down due to the fact that our licenses weren't renewed. We're seeing this right across the world, and there's no question that um, the world is becoming an, a riskier place for the mining industry, which is why country, countries like Canada, Australia, the United States, these are becoming more and more important uh, countries that... Uh, that have the rule of law firmly established where companies and their investors can can be confident that uh, their their tenure is going to be uh, respected and the rule of law is going to okay. to be respected